Good evening, everyone. My name is Crystal Ross, and I'm one of the directors in the Allegheny Health Network Cancer Institute. Thank you for attending our Ahead of Cancer lecture series this evening, sponsored by the Allegheny Health Network Cancer Institute. We are excited to have Dr. Larissa Greenberg to talk about sarcoma and, bed and bone insights tonight. There are a few housekeeping items that we want to review before we start. During the presentation, all participants are able to type questions into the Q&A portion of the Zoom connection. We will be addressing those questions at the end of the lecture if there is time. Zoom participants are not able to speak during the conference, but again, we encourage feedback via the chat. Tonight, we welcome Dr. Larissa Greenberg. Dr. Greenberg is a board certified medical oncologist who sees patients at, at the Allegheny General Hospital in the AHN Cancer Institute. She specializes in head and neck cancers as well as sarcoma. She has decades of experience treating patients with cancer, clinical research, and teaching. She is a member of the American Society of Clinical Oncology, Society of Neuro-Oncology, Pennsylvania Society of Oncology and Hematology, and the Pennsylvania Medical Society. Dr. Greenberg received her medical degree from Terpolsky Medical School in Ternopil, Ukraine. Her education and training included completing an internship and residency in internal medicine from Sinai Hospital in Detroit, Michigan, and completing a fellowship in medical oncology from Wayne State University School of Medicine. Tonight, we'd like to welcome Dr. Greenberg. Thank you very much um, for the introduction. As you uh, announced, uh, we're going to briefly discuss uh, sarcoma and most up-to-date treatments available uh, for this group of the disease. So um, what is sarcoma? Sarcoma is the cancer that may originate uh, from the bones or from the soft tissue. And usually we divide sarcoma in two large groups, such as bone sarcoma, and as I already said, soft tissue sarcoma. And soft tissue uh, could be the nerves, the muscles, the cartilage, tendons, fat, blood vessels, etc. Sarcomas may occur in any part of the body. As to uh, frequency, the uh, soft tissue sarcoma is more common than bone sarcoma. And uh, sarcomas are very different and there are more than 150 different subtypes of sarcomas. So uh, soft tissue sarcoma, uh, they are different in a tissue origin. Uh, they are different in their natural clinical behavior. Um, they are different um, in a sense of um, age of origin. Also, they are different as to how aggressive the uh, disease could be. Uh, some of the sarcomas have a very special pattern of spread, which may differ from other ones. Uh, very important to notice that sarcomas also have different genetic alterations, and we'll talk about this in a little bit. Also, uh, sarcomas are notably uh, different as to how they respond to treatment. As uh, um, you may know, sarcomas are very rare and they constitute um, about less than 1% of all the malignancies. Um, and um, um, in the pediatric population, uh, the incidence of sarcomas is higher and can go up to 20%. Um, so each year in the United States, uh, we have uh, around 12,000 uh, patients diagnosed with soft tissue sarcoma and about 3,000 patients diagnosed with bone sarcomas. And in comparison, I can tell you that about uh, 280,000 patients diagnosed with breast cancer. So you see there is a huge difference um, in uh, numbers. As I said, uh, sarcomas can originate in any parts of the body and some parts of the body are specific to occurrence of certain sarcomas. 
for example, uh, there is this sarcoma called gastrointestinal stromal tumors, and they usually originate in gastrointestinal tract. Osteosarcoma obviously usually originate in bones. Something called Ewing sarcoma may originate in bone or uh, soft tissues. Now, another example is um, very aggressive tumor, which is called a malignant peripheral nerve sheet tumor, and it usually originates from the nerves. Lyomyosarcoma could originate from uh, smooth muscle, where rhabdomyosarcoma originates from uh, skeletal muscle. And um, angiosarcoma is also uh, known, a very aggressive form of sarcoma usually originates from the blood vessels. So how do the sarcoma present? Usually uh, someone noticed to have a lump. Uh, the lump usually is not painful, but it may grow. It may have a slow growth or quick growth. If sarcoma um, in, uh, starts in the bone, one can present with a skeletal pain or bone pain. The bones can break. If sarcoma originates in the abdominal cavity or uh, in the retroperitoneum, one can present with abdominal pain. And of course, if sarcoma spreads, that can ultimately lead to weight loss. Here, I'm just showing you a few pictures. Um, and um, they are uh, basically very representative of these um, um, uh, lumps. Um, that one can notice one of them are bigger or as small as this one. If someone develops uh, the mass, if you know of anybody or someone asks you a question, don't neglect this. Watch what's happening with it. And if it's not going away, it would not be a bad idea to see the doctor. Now, what are the causes? As in any cancer or in any malignancies, we don't know exactly what's causing the cancer. But in general, cancers occur from changes in uh, DNA of the cells, or we call it mutations. So the DNA inside a cell is packaged, packaged into a large number of genes. Uh, each of which contain a set of instructions telling the cell how to behave. Should it die, should it grow, or should it divide? So mutations um, might tell the cells to divide and grow uh, without control and to continue to uh, live where the normal cells would die. So when that happens, the accumulating abnormal cells can form a tumor. And the cells from the tumor can break can spread and we call this metastasis and it can spread to other parts of the body. Um, what are the risk factors for sarcoma? It's been known long um, for a long time that radiation is the risk for the development of sarcoma. And we learned it from um, patients who were treated, for example, for childhood cancers. Um, as an example, uh, the person was treated for, let's say, Hodgkin's lymphoma. 10 years later or 20 years later, this person may develop breast cancer or lung cancer. So that's something that potentially could be radiation induced. Some exposure to chemicals could be associated uh, with the incidence of sarcoma. Now, it is well known that uh, genetic predispositions, um, some genetic syndromes, also could be um, associated with the development of the sarcoma. And um, some of the examples, for example, uh, is neurofibromatosis type 1, uh, retinoblastoma gene mutation, um, Lifra Mooney syndrome, et cetera. Now, somebody, for example, who was diagnosed with breast cancer and develops lymphedema may carry this lymphedema for a long time. And at some point, um, 
this may be uh, the cause for the development of a very aggressive sarcoma that is called angiosarcoma, or it calls Stewart-Travis syndrome. The other association or risk factors is viruses. Um, HHV-8 virus, it's human herpes virus 8, is associated with the development of Kaposi sarcoma. Now, uh, I placed this slide. Uh, I know it's not uh, very meaningful to you, but um, the uh, um, nice um, issue with sarcoma that a lot of sarcomas carry this genetic abnormalities, <clears throat> some of which can be used for diagnostic purposes. Some of them eventually can be used for treatment purposes. It just to um, show you as to how complex this entity is. Um, sorry, that's a little duplicate. So what are the treatments for sarcoma? Of course, uh, surgery is the main stem treatment and a lot of sarcomas are curable with surgery. So surgery can be used for cure of sarcoma. It's very advanced nowadays. Having said that, uh, don't forget that sometimes the surgery can be used for the treatment of metastatic disease, and it's a common practice in sarcomas. Chemotherapy um, usually uh, is not uh, used for treatment uh, of sarcoma with curative intent, but it may be used in addition to surgery. Sometimes the chemotherapy plus minus radiation therapy can be used prior to surgery, sometimes after the surgery. Of course, uh, you all may know that chemotherapy could or uh, is being used for the treatment of sarcoma that is spread or metastatic disease. Radiation therapy uh, can be used again uh, with curative intent in combination with surgery plus minus chemotherapy. And then there are newer ways of treating cancers and specifically sarcoma which is targeted therapy and immunotherapy. We'll talk about this in a little bit more detail. The uh, um, importance of taking um, care of patients with sarcoma should always be um, thought that it has to be done in multidisciplinary fashion which means when patient uh, for sarcoma is evaluated, uh, we recommend uh, that these patients go to high volume institutions and um, uh, the patient to be evaluated by all the subspecialties, of course, surgeon, medical oncologist, radiation oncologist, uh, supportive staff. It's very important to have the pathologist who specializes in um, uh, reading of the pathology slides, because in many situations, it may become um, very challenging. Um, this slide tells you that approximately 20% of sarcoma could be cured by surgery alone. Um, about 50 to 55% of sarcomas may be cured with chemotherapy and radiation therapy uh, plus surgery. Unfortunately, some sarcomas may become resistant to what we call conventional treatment, and we are in their need for new um, treatment options, uh, new medications, etc. This is the list of conventional chemotherapy that we commonly use um, sometimes in preoperative settings, but mainly in metastatic settings. And you may have heard the names, um, it's adriamycin, doxorubicin, iphosphamide, um, trabectidin, gemcitabine, et cetera. So these are all conventional treatments um, and they exist for many years. Uh, we continue to use them. 
uh, but also there are other ones that we're gonna talk about. Um, this is a little table I made just to demonstrate the five-year survival of different types of sarcoma. For example, soft tissue sarcoma, um, the patients who have localized disease, uh, their survival rate at five years is 81%. Um, in bone sarcoma, uh, 87%. Patients with local advanced stage of the disease, the survival rate is 56%. And in bone sarcomas, 83%. And with metastatic disease, the survival of five-year duration is significantly lower and it ranges at 16% for soft tissue and 55% uh, for bone sarcomas. The reason why for bone sarcomas, um, the uh, uh, five-year survival is much higher because a lot of bone sarcomas are sensitive to chemotherapy. Therefore, even when patients present with metastatic disease, as we um, apply the chemotherapy to their treatment, they live much longer and some of them even can go in remission. So bone sarcomas um, also um, is a very important entity and um, we unfortunately see a fair number of young people with bone sarcomas. Uh, the survival of patients with bone sarcomas um, him, it has improved dramatically within the past 30 years, and this is due to the addition of chemotherapy to um, treatment of bone sarcomas. And again, as I said earlier, this is due to the fact that bone sarcomas are very sensitive to chemotherapy. Also, there is a major change in how we treat bone sarcomas. If previously um, the surgical treatment option was an amputation of the extremity, nowadays um, in the majority of cases, um, the surgeons are able to preserve um, the extremity and do magics where people uh, continue to walk and function. Now, I want to talk about targeted therapy um, for treatment of sarcoma. So targeted therapy is a relatively new entity, um, and it's, the explanation is simple. It targets something, right? So um, targeted therapy specifically works uh, by stopping or slowing the growth of the cancer cells or sarcoma cells. And it happens at the, what we call cellular level. So the cancer cells, they need specific mo molecules. Usually it's a proteins to survive, to carry on with their lives. These molecules usually are made by genes uh, that cause cancer. So the targeted therapies, they're designed to um, interfere with that specific gene that's causing the specific sarcoma or cancer um, to continue to um, advance. Uh, this slide demonstrates uh, the uh, difference between um, chemotherapy and targeted therapy. So chemotherapy also designed to kill the cancer cells and chemotherapy usually acts on a rapidly dividing normal and cancer cells. Therefore, you usually um, see a lot of side effects with chemotherapy because of the damage to the normal cells. And chemotherapy usually acts with a goal to kill the cancer cell. Where targeted therapy, it specifically acts on those molecular or genomic or gene targets that associated with cancer or sarcoma progression. It usually blocks the tumor proliferation, but some of the targeted agents can also kill the tumor. When we evaluate the patient uh, with sarcoma, uh, we usually um, advise what we call genomic testing or next generation sequencing testing. 
What it means, um, we take a sample uh, from the patient's tumor um, and we submit to special, we call genomic lab um, that uh, does the testing of the tumor cell DNA, RNA, and they, they send us their report. And report may look like this. So here you have a diagnosis of sarcoma, and here it tells you that this particular patient has some genetic alterations, P10, KRAS, APC, BRAF, et cetera. Sometimes they will tell you that you can use specific drugs for these alterations. Some of the companies, um, they um, basically give you the list of clinical trials that uh, patients could potentially participate in. It's been uh, very helpful and um, this, we call this personalized medicine where we potentially could design the specific treatment for a certain uh, patient or certain patient's tumor. Uh, we uh, nowadays started doing this genomic testing in our institution. So, um, and this is the list of different targeted therapies that are available nowadays for patients for sarcoma. So some of them listed here, they work on the blood vessels. Some of them listed here, they work on a specific, we call it cell cycle progression where you can stop the cells from dividing. Uh, the ones listed here, that's basically is immunotherapy and um, we'll talk about it in a bit more. Uh, the ones listed here, they stop their DNA repair, et cetera. I, uh, briefly, I made this small slide just to give you an idea of targeted therapies uh, for different types or subtypes of sarcoma that are approved um, by FDA. For example, pazopanib virtually can be used uh, for a majority of soft tissue sarcomas, except adipocytic, which means liposarcoma. Uh, then um, there is uh, this newer drug called paxidartinib, and it's being used for what is called tenosynovial giant cell tumor. Uh, this is a very interesting entity. It's not the malignant tumor by itself, but it's usually being uh, seen uh, by the physicians who are dealing with sarcoma. It usually originates in the joint. Um, it does not metastasize, but it cause, may cause significant morbidity. I think I may have a picture to show you. That's a picture of this tenosynovial uh, giant cell tumor. As you can see, this is the hand, and you can see um, how much of changes and you taking this drug, which is the pill, and eventually um, within a month of treatment, you see great results. And usually these patients report that their symptoms significantly improved. Another drug uh, is called imatinib. You could have heard about it. Um, it could be used for different malignancies, but in sarcoma, um, we use it for tumor that is called dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. It's the tumor that uh, may occur anywhere in the body. It kind of usually happens on the skin of the extremities or torso, and it could be removed surgically, and usually it is, but some of them have a tendency of coming back. And if they do, the surgery may not be feasible, then we can use this drug. Now there is an, another subtype of very rare sarcoma, which is called epithelioid sarcoma. And the drug that recently was approved for this is tazemetastat. Another very rare sarcoma, which um, you know you may see once or twice in your lifetime, it's called pecoma or perivascular epithelioid cell tumor. The drug that is approved is called nepsirolimus. 
And this drug, uh, along with another one from the same family, approved for the tumors that express this n drug gene fusion. I'm going to show you an interesting picture. So, in general terms, in adult sarcomas, especially soft tissue sarcoma, um, to discover this um, n drug gene fusion is a um, it, it, good luck, and it's a very rare event. It may be expressed in a couple percent of sarcomas. However, infants may develop this, which is called congenital infantile uh, fiber sarcoma. As you can see, this big lump on this poor infant's hand um, or arm. And um, these tumors at this age group, they expressed. Uh, in sarcomas almost in 90% of cases or even higher than 90. Therefore, uh, surgery, of course, is an option, but the other drugs that could potentially can be used is called loratractinib and selatractinib, which targets, and that's the targeted therapy, which targets this n gene fusion. Chondrosarcomas, um, there are different subtypes of the chondrosarcomas. There are less aggressive, low-grade chondrosarcomas, more aggressive. Um, recently, chondrosarcomas um, research showed that um, these tumors, up to 40 to over 50% of them, can express this. It's called IDH1 and IDH2. Um, genetic abnormalities. And we have the drugs. One of them is listed here. It's called ivacidinib that potentially targets this abnormality. And um, the drug is, it's a pill. It's an oral drug. It's um, relatively easy to use. Um, of course, any drug, even aspirin has side effects, but this is a well-tolerated drug. And we have some good results um, where patients are taking it and we're able to keep their disease at bay. Now, I want to briefly switch gears and talk about um, um, immunotherapy. What is immunotherapy? What you, I'm sure you know that your own immune cells protect you from bacteria, from other um, you know, things that can, um, you know, cause problems to your body systems, but also um, your own immune system can fight the cancer. Usually your immune system is in a balance, which means, um, you know, the representative of the immune system, specifically T cell, they, um, some of them are functioning, but a lot of they them stay dormant because if they become activated, then people develop autoimmune disease, etc. So, but um, the uh, treatment with immunotherapy is based on the fact that these T cells can fight the tumor. Now, the tumors are shrewd and uh, they um, make this protein that binds to T cell and can put the brakes on the T cell. So the scientists developed the drugs that potentially can break this binding um, and allow uh, the T cell become fully functional. So immunotherapy is usually medications that are given via infusion um, and um, they travel all around the body and potentially, um, you know, work uh, on um, killing the cancer cells or sarcoma cells um, or keeping the disease in check. So the immunotherapy is very successful in treating uh, multiple cancers nowadays specifically melanoma, renal cell, lung, head and neck, et cetera. In uh, uh, the uh, um, sarcoma population, we unfortunately are lagging uh, behind. 
um, because uh, A, the sarcomas are very different. And as I said before, they are very differently made and they respond to treatment differently. And it's difficult to test um, certain drugs on, uh, um, you know, sarcoma. So we usually uh, include patients with all the sarcomas on specific treatment. And then, you know, from there, we try to figure out for which type of sarcoma the treatment works and for which is not. So few of the sarcomas actually showed that they derive quite significant benefit from immunotherapy. And this is alveolar soft part sarcoma, cutaneous angiosarcoma of the tumor that originates from the blood vessel, undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma, and the differentiated liposarcomas. So, um, In general terms, um, those are sarcomas that belong to soft tissue uh, sarcoma and the soft tissue sarcoma are more responsive than bone sarcoma to treatment with immunotherapy. In a pivotal trial where they use pembrolizumab for the treatment of different types of sarcoma, uh, the highest response rate, so to speak, was found in undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma and liposarcoma, and some chondrosarcoma patients. So again, it's a very complex uh, um, issue as studying uh, of certain drugs in a large lump of patients with different sarcomas. Now, the first FDA-approved immunotherapy is sarcoma uh, in metastatic sarcoma was uh, occurred um, late last year. And this is atezolizumab for alveolar soft part sarcoma. Uh, this is the type of sarcoma that usually originates in young people. It usually, or it may start from the extremities and then it can spread to um, you know, different parts of the body. Um, um, it has a relatively indolent course, nevertheless, you know, it continued to metastasize and eventually uh, takes um, the life away. Um, so the response rate um, for um, treatment of these patients with metastatic alveolar soft part sarcoma was in around between 40 and 50%, pretty good number. Now, uh, there are other um, newer treatment options that's being investigated. Um, it's called TIL therapy, and it's a type of immunotherapy. Uh, TIL stands for tumor infiltrating lymphocytes. So what happens as uh, we discussed, T cells and lymphocytes, they're usually the ones who are responsible for immunity or in a situation of cancer, they designed or oh, they may work um, and kill the cancer cells in the body. So usually um, what happens is um, the piece of tumor is um, taken to the lab and uh, the uh, uh, T cells um, are isolated in the, um, in the tumor. Um, then in the lab, uh, they are multiplied. Um, and then after there is a certain number of T cells, they are delivered back to the patient um, who has metastatic sarcoma. And the concept is that um, this, um, you know, a large number of T cells potentially will um, cause the demise of the tumor. Uh, the TIL therapy so far has been proven effective in some of the cancers, specifically melanoma. Uh, sarcoma is next on the list. Uh, we do have the TIL program therapy in, um, at West Penn Hospital, and we hopefully um, be able to open um, 
the door for some patients with metastatic sarcoma. Another complicated treatment, which also is in the realm of um, immunotherapy, it's um, the um, engineered T cell receptor therapy. Um, some of the uh, sarcomas are known to express this antigen. And it's commonly expressed in the disease called synovial sarcoma, which is a very aggressive hybrid uh, sarcoma and myxoid liposarcoma. So what happens, the way um, this is being done, um, the patient's own T cells, again, are isolated from the blood and um, they are removed, they are filtered, the remaining of the blood is given back to the patient. And then those T cells are genetically modified and specifically designed to target this NYASO1 receptor. So the cells are infused to the patient. And again, the preliminary data showed a quite significant uh, response rate to this particular procedure. Of course, these are procedures that carry high rate of uh, side effects and the patients who are selected for this type of treatments have to be, you know, relatively healthy and younger. So our field is moving forward. We certainly are looking for uh, new treatment options. We're looking for uh, patients who wish to participate in clinical trials. And hopefully one day um, the sarcomas that is also metastasized can be cured. And um, these are a couple um, addresses that I put here if you want to get more information about sarcomas. And um, July is Sarcoma Awareness Month. So I'm going to stop here and ask questions. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys can ask questions, not me. Thanks, Dr. Greenberg. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat. Um, we'll just wait another minute or two and see if anybody has any additional questions. That was a great overview and presentation on sarcoma. Thank you. Um, uh, here's a question here. Um, what would you suggest for metastatic Ewings? Well, um, it's a good question. Um, so certainly there are some clinical trials that uh, potentially are using the translocation that is known to occur in Ewing sarcoma. Also, one can consider the use uh, of um, temozolomide uh, with possibly another chemotherapy drug. There are not too many options, but there are some. And um, clinical trials, I would put on the priority list. Thank you. Any other questions from the group? Okay, if there are no other questions, we'd like to thank you all for attending the Ahead of Cancer Lecture Series. Please continue to join us at our monthly Ahead of Cancer Lectures as we focus on cancer screening, detection, treatment, and survivorship. As a reminder, tonight's lecture was recorded. If you're interested in watching tonight's lecture, check back on the AHN YouTube channel for the full recording. This video, as well as other past lectures, will be posted under the Ahead of Cancer playlist. If you would like to schedule an appointment or have questions regarding a potential cancer concern, please call us at the HOPE line at 412-578-6473 to schedule an appointment. You may also call our 24-hour Nurse For You line at 412-687-4968. Thanks again for all who attended and thank you, Dr. Greenberg, for this great lecture. Thank you. Thank you.